typically going the distance is something that's good in your personal and professional life, doing sort of as much as you can as often as you can. Uh, but when it comes to running expensive tests in CI, that's not necessarily the best strategy. And so I'm going to sort of talk to you about a system that we built to avoid running tests. Uh, but first, in case you missed it yesterday, self-driving companies love Bazel. And the reason that we love Bazel is it because uh, it allows us to sort of have all of our developers work together. Um, we can have our motion planning and perception system built to be deployed to the vehicles, but also package them up in a Docker image to deploy to the, crowd, deploy to the cloud to run millions of simulations over them. We have custom CUDA code that requires a GPU to run unit tests. And we have uh, sort of embedded hardware in the loop systems that we run tests on, web apps that have integration tests, web services. There's just a, a ridiculously diverse set of technologies and systems. And Bazel allows us to bring all of those together. Um, the unfortunate thing with all of this is that it's not easy to find sort of a one size fits all solution to triggering sort of all of these unique different kinds of tests. And so over the years, we've had some different strategies for avoiding tests. Very early on, uh, probably a lot of people have seen this. You just spin up your CI system, and you're like, cool, run it all the time. Uh, and then after that, maybe you say, OK, well, let's not run it all the time, but only when specific files are changed. And so you can kind of set up, OK, when we see a diff change this file, but not those, then run this thing. And that works pretty decently, but uh, it's a lot of sort of management and overhead, and it's easy to make mistakes. And so eventually, we settled on something uh, where we use the targets that have changed to trigger our build kite jobs. And so we sort of have our own internal system, very similar to Bazel diff, uh, that we call changed targets. And on each of our build kite jobs, we can say, run it when this target changes. And then we sort of brought over all of those exclusion lists from our globs to try to avoid over triggering. Uh, the downside with this is that uh, maintaining these exclusion lists is sort of very burdensome. It requires knowledge like to be sort of kept in sync with the build graph. And we'd sort of like a turnkey solution where uh, more teams will just sort of say, here's my test target. Just run it when changes are made that are very relevant to it. And so sort of how do we figure out what's relevant? Um, and our idea for this was to skip tests that are we consider far away. So in this example, we have a Python file, a whole bunch of targets, unit tests, build kite jobs that are configured to trigger for it. Um, and we want to sort of say, OK, well, let's skip those build kite jobs that are further away, because we'd really like for unit tests and other tests that are closer to the file that was changed to catch errors and not be spending a ton of money doing sort of expensive uh, cloud simulation jobs to catch errors. And so to find these things that are far away, um, first, uh, we'll have to find the things that are immediately changed. And so as a little bit of a background on how uh, Bazel diff and all these uh, sort of target diffing tools work, um, you do a Bazel query, you take that output, you hash it, and then you get a list of target labels and hashes. If you do that twice, then compare the hashes for all your targets, you can see what's changed. But it doesn't sort of tell you uh, whether it was changed transitively due to like a dependency changing or directly due to like one of the source files changing. And so what we added to our implementation was an additional hash to each of the targets that only contains information about the source file content, the attribute values, uh, and the rule implementation hash. And so when we see that a target has changed because the combined hash has changed, we can then look at that direct hash and see if it's exactly the same between two different Git revisions, then that target was only changed due to indirect dependencies. But if it is different, between those two different Git revisions, then we know that someone changed a source file or an attribute or the implementation of the rule. And so once we know that a target is directly changed, we can go back to the build graph and sort of say all targets that are directly changed have a target distance of zero, where the target distance is the number of edges to a directly changed target, sort of the number of hops you have to take in the build graph. And then we can walk the graph and count upwards. And once we have this, we could say, OK, well, any, uh, any of our build kite jobs that were triggered due to a change to a target that has a very high target distance, we'll just skip that. Uh, the problem that we had with trying to do this was that uh, 
all of the different language ecosystems in our repo had vastly different target distances across all of our pull requests. So for example, in Golang, the convention is to have one target inside of an entire package, whereas our Python targets, we could have five to 10 targets all wired up to each other. And so there wasn't really a way to sort of apply a consistent threshold to all of the different uh, language ecosystems in our repo. And so we computed an additional metric for each of the uh, changed targets where we look at the package distance, where the package distance only counts dependency edges that cross a package boundary. And this works well because packages are sort of more cohesive units in Bazel. You can restrict their, you can sort of restrict the visibility of what is, goes in and out of them. And it sort of makes more sense for if you're trying to say, when do I run this integration test? Well, if you're changing something very far away, let's skip it. And so what does this look like at the end? Um, our change target system will spit out uh, a list that includes, for each target, its label. Uh, the target distance and the package distance. And so again, if a target distance is zero, then that means that target was directly modified. Someone changed its source. And if the package distance is zero, then that means someone changed another target in that same package. And so we can use this information to uh, sort of decide what, what jobs to run. Um, additionally, it's not in here, but we also include some other information uh, like tags and the rule kind so that downstream systems could say, I want to run this when a target that has this tag was directly changed. And so what we did with this is we applied sort of a flat threshold of package distance across all of our build kite jobs that were configured to be triggered based on change basal targets. And this, uh, this threshold gave us a really nice control point for managing cost, because if we wanted to say, okay, well, we're spending a lot, we just bring that threshold down, uh, sort of at the cost of potentially more breakages landing. But if we're saying, okay, well, maybe for this thing, we'd rather spend more to catch more issues, we can move that threshold up, which ended up being a really nice operational control for us sort of as we're rolling this out and fine tuning what threshold we wanted to set. And so other ideas that we have for the future, um, we wanted to start looking at using this data to filter our unit tests. So if we have a very large unit test that takes a long time or a unit test that needs a GPU to run, uh, we'd only run those on close changes or potentially looking at using uh, sort of building and testing our test targets with various sanitizers, but only when they're very close because we've found that sanitizer tests uh, if you try to run your whole CI for all the different types of sanitizers, you just spend a lot of money. Uh, they take longer to build and they're longer to run. Uh, and so you might be thinking, uh, this all sounds great, I'd love to use it, but you said this is your closed source uh, system. Uh, I've been working on open sourcing this in Bazel Diff, which given how many times it's been mentioned, seems to be the most popular one of these. Um, so hopefully it should be landing very soon. I uh, just got all the tests passing yesterday. Um, so I'm really curious about uh, how you think you would use this. So like, what would you change about your CI system if you knew exactly how far away some of your tests were from a directly changed target? Um, I'd also like to call out that like, uh, I think being able to open source this and essentially have the implementation created in like a weekend or two, having never done any Kotlin development. Like I could just clone the repo, Bazel build, Bazel test, it was going, I think is like sort of a testament to how great Bazel is for open source development. Um, so yeah, please uh, just, if you get ideas for this or have something that you think would be a good idea to add to this, uh, find me on Bazel Slack or later on to let me know. So thanks.